And now for something completely different. The wildly weird and unbelievably bonkers world of Stephen Butler and Stephen Lenton in their collaboration, the Nothing to See Here Hotel series. This is a remarkable hotel, open to all kinds of fantastical creatures, but no humans allowed. The writer, Stephen Butler, appears to be quite akin with the mischievous young boys that he writes about in his books. He's done brilliantly with his Dennis the Menace Diaries series. And as well as being a writer, he's also a fantastic actor. He played Horrid Henry in the stage show. Stephen Lenton grew up in a pom-pom factory. True fact, it was his family business. He also co-directed the Teletubbies pop video. He's now an award-winning illustrator, well known for his Shifty the Gifty and Slippery Sam series, written by Tracy Corduroy. This is their first collaboration together, and Stephen and Stephen make quite the comic duo. And here they are now, talking about their new books. My name is Stephen Butler. And my name is Stephen Lenton. And we are the author and illustrator of... <sighs> the Nothing, Nothing to See Here Hotel series. Um, hi guys, we've got you for the next half an hour or so. Um, we're really, really glad that you're tuning in. It's been a strange year so far. 2021 is shaping up to be just as strange. And we're all cooped up indoors. But hopefully we can have a little bit of fun... And if you've Definitely. never read these before, the Nothing See Here Hotel books, we've got lots and lots, we'll tell you all about them. What else are we going to do? We're going to do a little bit of drawing, so make sure teachers and pupils and everyone involved in this video to do have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and maybe something to colour in. We're going to be drawing um, a, a baddie. She's kind of a baddie, isn't she? But she's, a, she's an animal mm -hmm. um, as well. So you might want to get a green crayon, a green and a yellow crayon to colour it later as well. So there's a little tip for you. So and just, yeah. uh, just a little disclaimer as well. If you hear lots of snuffling and the occasional fart, it's oh, not yes. us. We have a little dog at our feet and he's Quite noisy, so chewing his leg at the moment. Strange noises. We'll introduce you later. We'll show you. But yes, um, it's not us. We're not sat here parping, I promise. <laughs> um, how do you want to start? What, do we, what should we do first? Should well, we should we introduce about what the books are? So yes, tell us about book one. What happens in book one? So book one of the Nothing to See Here Hotel. It's the yellow one, and it is just called the Nothing to See Here Hotel. And this is the first book, and it introduces you to the main character, which is a little boy. He's on there, and he's behind us, just oh, yes, right there. in the middle. Um, his name is Frankie Bannister, and he lives at the Nothing to See Here Hotel, and I'm going to read to you from this in a little bit, so I'll introduce you a bit more. Um, and then we've got book two, if you guys have already read book one, and book two is called You Ain't Seen Nothing Yeti, and this is all about a family of yetis who come to stay, and they travel from the Himalayas all the way across Europe, and Asia, Asia first, and they travel at the centre of a blizzard. Mm. So they freeze everything in their path all the way to the Nothing to See Here Hotel. And there's lots and lots of quite crazy action in this one. This one gets a little bit scarier. And they're not lazy yetis. You won't find them him a laying on the couch, will you? That's a stolen joke. There we are. It's <laughs> Book uh, three. Book three is Seeing is Believing. And in this book, we go to the bottom of the ocean and we discover that there is another wing of the hotel at the bottom of the sea. And there's a huge ballroom called the Briny Ballroom. And they they throw an enormous bash. They have a big party. But things don't go well because there's more than... There's a lot of scary things lurking at the bottom of the ocean. I think it's I my favourite one, book three. I love an underwater adventure. And this is certainly an adventure underwater. And then, very newly out, came out this year, or no, it didn't come no, out this year. No, last year now, it's a year old. It's, it's 2021 20, now. now. It came out in 2020. It came out last Halloween, didn't it? And we have The Fiend of the Seven Sewers, very scary. Whoa. This is the scariest one, but it's not terrifying or anything, so don't be worried. It's still a good bedtime story. It won't give you nightmares, but it's quite creepy. Yes, and we're going to teach you how to draw one of the characters from this book later on. Yes. She's actually on the back. Oh, something we didn't mention as well. We've, we've got a Q&A at the end of our session. Um, some people, some fans of the hotel have been writing in. So I know, unfortunately, we can't get questions from the floor live as we are because this is pre-recorded. But we've got a good mixture of questions, I think, from, from fans up and down the world. Up and down the universe. Up and down Cheshire. Right. Um, 
Should we start with a bit of reading? Yeah, go on, you do okay. a reading and then um, we'll do a bit of drawing. So I'm going to read to you from book one, just because for any of you that haven't read any of these books, it's a good place to start. And as I said, this book is all about Frankie, who's the little boy. And he, oh, there he is. I can't get I'm going the wrong way. So there's Frankie and he's right between us. And Frankie, as I said, lives at the hotel and he is um, he is three quarters human and one quarter troll. Um, and his great 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 grandma is a great big troll who lives. Oh God, <laughs> I can't find it. On Good here. job we're not weathermen. Uh, <laughs> who lives down there in, in the tower? Scotland. She lives in the tower at the top of the hotel. And if you look very closely, let's see if I can line this up. You can actually oh, you see, can see her. She's yeah. there looking out with her glowing eyes. Okay. Very scary. And what I like is, sorry, on the fourth one. No, is it the third one? <laughs> on the third one, because on the cover she's actually on. I'm at it now. She's on there on the cover, so she's not up there. Those are not the details. Tower. The detail, isn't it? So I'm going to read to you from book one, and I'm going to read to you right from the start. And it's when Frankie is climbing the 399 steps to Grandma's bedroom tower a lot of steps. to bring her her dinner. And so it's the first time we meet Frankie, and it's the first time we meet Granny. And her name is Granny Regurgita. Regurgita Glump, her name is. <laughs> and it goes like this. Okay, it says, Visiting Granny always gives me a gloopy, nervous feeling in the bottom of my belly. Granny Regurgita is just plain terrifying. Even Dad gets twitchy whenever she hobbles down from her tower once in a blue moon to see what's going on in the hotel. When Granny's in a bad mood, and she's always is, she can make a blood-crazed tiger look like a cute little kitten. 399, 397, 398. Ugh. I finally got to the top and stopped to catch my breath. Outside, rain was lashing against the windows, and this high up in the tower, everything creaked and groaned. I was half expecting the whole thing to topple over in the wind, so I didn't want to hang about. Just get it over with, I whispered to myself, then gulped and knocked on Granny's bedroom door. There was a long silence, and for a minute I thought I was in luck and Granny was already asleep. Fat chance. Come in, boy, she finally croaked from the other side. I nudged the door open with my foot, and her familiar stink of mould and rotten vegetables wafted out onto the landing. It's sour enough to sting your uh, I've lost, I've lost my place. It's sour enough to sting your eyes and make you sick, I swear. No matter how many times I brought Granny Regurgia to her food and bedtime mug of pondweed tea, I'd never get used to the disgusting pong of that wrinkly old husk. Inside Granny's bedroom, Everything was inky dark. I stood in the light of the landing and squinted my eyes, trying to spot her in the gloom. Hurry up, you useless carbuncle! I could hear the sound of her slug lips smacking together. <laughs> Granny's hungry! What have you brought me? Just then, lightning flashed outside, and I caught sight of her copper penny eyes glinting in the darkness. Get on with it, you little snot! <laughs> I took a step inside her bedroom and shuffled towards the spot I'd seen her eyes flash seconds before. One of the perks of being the great-great-great-grandson of a troll is that I can usually see in the dark just like it's daytime. It's one of the cool things about being a human kid with troll blood in your veins. But this was magical darkness filling the room, thicker, colder and blacker than the normal kind. Granny Regurgita loves to wrap herself in it like a blanket. Even when it's daytime and her windows are wide open, Granny's room is like the inside of a deep cave. I, um, I can't see, Granny, I said. Can you put the lights on? No, she barked. I like it Duke Sam and Dungeon Lee. Please, Gran. No! A bent teaspoon from last night's dinner sailed out of the gloom and bounced off the top of my head with a painful tunk. Ow! I yelled. Ow! Oh, stop your griping, Granny hissed, and give me my grab. I'm going to drop it. I knew that would work. Magical creatures are so greedy, and the thought of missing out on food or drink terrifies them. 
Granny Regurgita grunted in the dark. She snapped her crusty fingers and hundreds of candles in jam jar lanterns suddenly lit themselves. The room twinkled into view and there she was. My enormous grisly grandma hunched in her bed like some slobbering hairless buffalo. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, and I'll show you a picture. Show us, yeah. There's Granny. I'm going to. Oh, there it is. Look, there's Granny sitting in her bed, and that's her pet thistle womp between her feet. He's called Gurp. Ugh, she's got horrible feet. And there's Frankie bringing dinner. There she is. There you go. So that's from book one. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. What's up? Oh, yeah. Should we introduce Bob you to Bob now? Very noisy. Could you hear him? He's chewing and jangling and all sorts of things. So this oh. is Big Ears Bob, everybody. <laughs> Whoops, not Here the table. Is. Hang on, hang on, I'm coming oh, back. Oh, oh, oh. There he is. There you go. So this is Bob. He was being very noisy when I was reading. I apologise. Say hi, Bob. Are you busy down there? Busy under the table with your hi. shoes and bits hi. and doings? Uh, yeah. So that's Bob. He might make some more noises. So yes, as we say, we do apologise. But now we are going to draw a character from the fourth book. Now, as I get my piece, can you tell us a little bit about this yes. character? Yes, hang on. I'm going to put Bob back down. Oh, yeah. yes, do you? you can't do three okay. things at once. Hi, guys. There we are. Right, so... Um, so yes, we are going to be drawing this character. Oh, I'm, I can't. There it is. <laughs> it's really hard. We're not getting any better. Uh, it, um, this is Doris the crocodile, and Doris is the main mode of transportation. She's a transportation crocodile mm -hmm. for a very, very important character in book four. And I don't want to tell you too much because you've got to read it. It's a big surprise. Yes, she's not. We kept her such a surprise. She's not on the cover or the back no, cover, is she? She's not mentioned, but. So we said a she, it's a lady, and she rides a crocodile, and she happens to be the mum of a very important character in the earlier books. So what we're going to do is, are you, can I'm you gonna help hold. me? Yeah. I'm going to hold it. Can you lean? Do there you go. No, that's fine. That's, that's, good. that's good, I think. I can lean. No, it needs to be a bit higher. Uh, sorry, my <laughs> have to hide your face. Okay. Now, can you see that all right? Yes. I've just got a bit of uh, stiff cardboard. Um, which should do the trick, I think. Obviously, if I was with you in person, we'd have a nice fancy clipboard. But I haven't got a clipboard. Um, we're in my studio in Brighton, so <laughs> greetings from Brighton. We spared no expense for Sorry, this cardboard. Can, can you breathe? Can you breathe behind there? Now, so yes, we're going to draw a crocodile. We're not going to draw the whole thing because it would take about twenty minutes. It would use up the whole of our time. So we're going to draw Doris's big, snappy face and jaws. So I want you to start off no, on right. this side of the paper, and we're going to do a bump and a bump like that, a bit like a letter M. Alrighty. And then we're going to go all the way down to the end of our piece of paper and we're going to do a sort of a heart shape like that. Can you hear Bob? He's right. chewing under the table. He's chewing. I don't know what he's chewing. He's probably chewing something he shouldn't be chewing. Now I left that room there because Doris has a pierced nose. She's got a ring that goes through her nose. So do a U shape like that, and like that, and then we can draw the nostrils in either side like that. So it looks like they're going in the nostrils. There we go. So that's the nose piece like that. Let's hold it up there a bit. A bit more this. Oh, there we go. Now we can see. That's good. Oh, I'm yeah. Just, sorry. It's fine. I'm not just trying to get rid of you. I'm just trying to help the viewers to see what I'm drawing. So now we're going to do a big line oh. and. <laughs> all the way along again, but just a big droopy line that goes down to the bottom right of your page. Uh, you can kind of see where I'm going with this now. Now we're going to draw her eyes. Her eyes are quite small and they're this side, and we're going to make her look mean. So they're semicircle because they're partly closed. That gives you a good evil eye. So you go down, along and up, and that gives you semicircles. Now I've drawn those lines at the edge because she's got long eyelashes. She's got beautiful long eyelashes, actually, so you can draw lots of eyelashes. You might have more room than I've got there. Now, we're going to give her a bit of a side eye. If you're drawing a baddie character, it's sometimes good to make them look a little bit shifty. Shifty McGifty, my other books, also available from the Bowenfield Festival. Um, OK, now we've got her shifty eyes. We need to give her some eye bags as well. One bag underneath. Let's give her a couple of eye bags underneath that. Again, that makes, um, if you're drawing a baddie, or an older character, eye bags are quite good for giving them some more character. Now, what does every crocodile need? What's everyone scared of crocodiles because of, Stephen? Yes. Is it their teeth? 
What? Why are people scared of crocodiles? I was minding my own business, my <laughs> idea. Are you having a, Are you having your breakfast? I was having a sleep. Um, teeth. 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 They're big teeth. Right, you can go back. Oh. You can go back underneath now. <laughs> I'm going to do that because I'm getting cramp in my left hand. <laughs> I don't know how um, Tony... Was it Tony Bennett? How did he, all these artists on TV do this thing? Uh, Tony right. Bennett? Tony Bennett. No one will know Tony Bennett. You mean Tony Hart, don't you? Oh, yeah, he's Tony Bennett. Oh, Miss, Mr. Bennett was the caretaker from from Tony Hart. Anyway, um, children won't know who I'm talking about, so let's just be quiet. Um, so now we're going to do a nice snarly mouth like that. You can do any shape as long as it goes down at the end because she's going to look quite grumpy. So that's not teeth, is it? I've been talking about teeth. We need to add the teeth. So the teeth are just sharp triangles, a bit like shark fins. Do a big one and then do a little one and then do another little one and another big one and then we can have one pointing down the way as well so you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing just as long as you've got a mixture of ones going up some coming down big ones small ones cardboard box that kind of thing now we need to add a bit more detail we've got really good expression and everything but I think we could make her look more like a crocodile we're going to add some cracks along her skin because sometimes crocodiles have very cracked chapped skin and again it just makes her look a bit more gnarly and narky there we go that's what that's what i look like in the mornings and then also we need to put some spots put one up there go away one down here and just do little dots and spots everywhere you could give little warts or spots here you could have one on there as well she's gorgeous anywhere like that and then also to finish her off we're going to draw some lines that come underneath her chin to give her a bit more of a 3d Crocodile chinned kind of crocodile. So there you go, that is your. Ooh. Should I hold it up closer? There yeah. you go. So you can put, if you're watching this, you could pause this. So that's what it should look like at the end, something like that. Oh, that's a really good idea. Put it closer. Yeah, they can pause it. I can't work out which way. There we are. That sort of that kind of thing. And her name, so I'll write her name as yeah, well. Yeah, so she's Doris. It's Doris. D O R I S. Doris. And don't spell it like me. The whole way when I wrote the book, I wrote it with two R's and then got told off by my editor that that's wrong. Oh, Stephen. I thought it did have two R's. That's Doris. Well, you could actually, when you're writing that, now we're going to come to the um, Q&A, but when you're writing, you can kind of make up any names you like. Indeed. Moving swiftly onto the Q&A. My hair's in North. I've got, I've, got, I've got lockdown hair. It's huge. I look like a mountain man. Right, let's get Bob back up because yes, he's it. chewing my feet and then we can oh. ask some questions. Okay, go, are you alright to grab him? I am, I am. Uh, uh, apologies for my slightly unkempt bookshelves in the background. I've ordered lots of new ones from Bob. a well-known... <coughs> there he is, Swedish. Oh, he's a little dead weight. Oh, oh close your ears, Bob. He didn't, want, he didn't want to come up on the table because he wanted to carry on chewing down there. Right, so we um, asked for some children and fans of the series yes, um, we went to online. write in some questions. Have you got your questions ready? We've got a, we've only got like three or four questions. We've got about five minutes left, five, ten minutes left. So um, we're going to try and answer your questions as best as possible. Bob, are you going to try and answer as well? Do you want to go first? Shall I? Uh, yes. So the first question... Didn't answer my question. What, did you, what was the question? I said, do you want to go first or shall I? And you said yes. <laughs> uh, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the first question I have is, can I go to the toilet? Oh, and that's from Oliver P. Daly from Lower Piova in Cheshire. Yes, of course you can go to the toilet. Yes, that was an in-depth, exciting question, wasn't it? Thank you, Oliver P. Daly. Okay, I've got a question here. Uh, we have, what is your favourite character to write or draw? Oh. And that's from Thackeray Zachary for Zachary from Droop in Dorset. Thank you, Thackeray. Droop, Droop in Dorset. Droop in Dorset. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Thackeray. Uh, so what is your favourite character to write or draw? Well, what's your favourite one to write, first of all? And while you're doing this, I'm going to find my favourite on one of the covers. Um, my favourite is in book two. Would you mind doing oh, the yes, book two? Oh, oh, is it? I think I know yes. who it is. But can you find the big picture of her inside? Oh, I'll it's try. Will you explain who it's she near is? near the beginning -ish. you explain who she is while I turn to that? Oh, that found it. Um, so my favourite character to write is the character Maudlin Maloney. There she is. And I absolutely love her. She's my favourite character to write. She's incredibly grumpy. And she loves to curse people. And she's surrounded by chickens. She flies in a caravan that's pulled by chickens. And she can't understand why she crashes all the time. Because she hasn't quite caught on to the fact that chickens can't fly. 
Yeah, so if like it's on the cover, there's yes. her caravan. And yes, and that's why everyone's always covered in eggs and things because there's ca uh, chickens flapping everywhere and yes. laying eggs left, right, So Maudlin is definitely, and she becomes a really important character through the rest of the book. She appears in book two, and then, yes, she became a firm favourite. Hi, buddy. Right. I think one of my new favourite characters to draw is Impia, who is from the new book. She's that. She's very mysterious. She's a sort of Jedi-like, I think, if you're a Star Wars fan. That is Impia. Tell us about Impia, Stephen. Well, what you can tell us about. Don't give anything away. Well, her nickname is the Slime Wife, mm -hmm. and she's a kind of frog witch. Um, and yes, she, she's there's a very, very, very big twist at the end of book four, which I will write about in book five when I finally come to write it. Um, and yeah, she's a big, important character. I also like uh, Viscera von Tangle, who is a pisky princess as well. She's really fun. And because she's tiny, she's like smaller than, um, well, she's about the size, about of, the size a, of a thumb, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, thumb or a toe. I was going to say toe. Great minds think about oh, wow. a thumb or a toe. So there you go. That, uh, should we have another question? Go for it. Do you have any top tips for writing or illustrating? And that is from Sally Bumsworth in Umbongleton. Um, oh, also in Cheshire. Oh, in Cheshire. You'd think I was from Cheshire, wouldn't you? Um, top tips for writing soon. Then I'll do some top tips for illustrating. Then maybe some top tips of being a puppy from Little Bob here. Um, my top tips for writing is I go. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. You, you hold him. Oh, I don't know. We might have to put him down on the floor. Oh, oh there he is. He's getting heavy. He's a literary pup. Um, my top tips for writing are. Um, always look around you. A lot of my characters are inspired by people I've met and seen. Um, so yes, be, I, I like to be a little magpie when I look around and I steal things all the time. There's lots of people. If you're writing a story, maybe you've got a grumpy teacher that you could that you could that could inspire a bad a guy. Idea, yeah. Maybe you've got um, a disgusting little brother or sister who's smelly and farts a lot and doesn't. And they, that could be a good character. Maybe you've got a little snorty dog. Um, so yes, always look around is a good tip for writing. Tents are a good idea, definitely. Yes. Aren't they, Bob? And then if you can't think of anything else, just go round to Julia Donaldson's house and dig through her bins where she throws out all her notes and steal those. <laughs> there we are. Don't do that, kids. Um, also, I think something that writers and illustrators can do is always carry a little book around with you. Or actually, you can always, if you've got a mobile phone, you can make notes on your mobile phone. Obviously, you can't do it all the time, but I do sometimes like to carry a sketchbook. And sometimes you just note little da little ideas at the back of my sketchbook sometimes. And they're often the things that when you're stuck for ideas, you just suddenly come up with that and think, hold on, that was two years ago. And I think it's now time to make that into something, into a project, a story or a character. And also, yeah, like Stephen said, using pet drawing. I like to draw Bob, um, drawing things around you. I often get asked, what is the most difficult thing to draw? And I always say that the most difficult thing to draw is something that you haven't drawn yet. If there's something that you find difficult, as soon as you start drawing it and start learning its shapes and the tones and um, generally what something looks like, then you sort of understand what it starts to look like and you practice, practice, practice. And say if you're drawing, big eared Bob like this, you might think, well, he's impossible. But then you start drawing him and you get his ears right and the shape of his nose and his eyes right. And it's like, oh, actually, it's not too bad. I thought he was going to be impossible, but now I've drawn him once. I can keep working on that, keep practicing, and I will perfect my big There isn't Bob. enough ink in the world to draw those massive ears. No, there isn't. That's why it's called Big Ear Bob. Have you got another question, Stephen? We've got a couple of minutes yes. left. Yes, um, I've got one. My next question, um, it's what is your chip and pin number? And that's, oh. it just says Pam. From Pam. Well, sorry, Pam, we're not answering that one. Well, Let's go is, to the next well, one. Mine's one, two, three, four. No, don't. Um, <laughs> are some of your characters, both drawing and writing wise, inspired by real people? And that is from Mavis Snaffle, and she's writing to us from the cabin of her truck at the truck parks in Kent. A very nice place, probably the nicest place in Kent. I'm from there. Uh, and so, uh, yes, are what characters have been inspired by real people? Well, in Hotel One, when we do our events, we always talk about the baddie in book one. Oh, yes. It does is... reoccur in the other books as well, which is brilliant because I love drawing things. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Prince Grogbar, and he's very small, he's yeah. very angry. There he is, Prince Grogbar. He's tiny, he's angry, he's ugly, but he thinks he's gorgeous. He's stupid, but he thinks he's smart. And we based him on... He thinks he's very impressive. And he is based on Donald Trump. Which yes. is quite time, because when we first started doing these books, he was quite sort of newish to yeah. the presidency. 
and sort of everyone believed that he was um, tiny hands. It was lovely. He was almost lovely. And now um, look what's happened. Anyway, another one. This is a visual. I, I, when I wrote it, she wasn't inspired by this, but I know when you drew her. Let me find a good picture. Um, oh, actually, the one on the front is probably the best. Um, hang on. Uh, 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 there she is. There's Nancy, the oh, giant Nancy. spider. Yeah. And obviously, when I wrote it, it wasn't inspired by her. But when you drew Nancy, you, who, do you, who did you take inspiration from? Uh, a bit of Dame Edna, a bit of Sue Pollard. Indeed. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, so it's yeah. good to yeah, base, base things on um, people that you know. All of. Right, last question. No, we've got time for two. It's fine. Oh, fine. Okay, sorry. My last question. How do I become an author or illustrator? Good question. That's from Posy Nosycroft from Dunfartonshire. So there you go. Posy nosy cross, quite a nosy question. How do I become an author or illustrator? Well, when I was at school, I just drew and drew and drew. I drew my action figures. I copied Dennis the Menace comics that I used to collect. I used to draw cartoon characters like He-Man and She-Ra and Transformers. Draw, draw, draw if you want to be an illustrator. Like I said, the only thing that's difficult to draw is something that you haven't drawn yet and learned how to draw. So... Um, do really as well as at school as you can. Do all your art classes. Do any extra art classes. When you're older, do life drawing. Do observational drawing outside, landscapes, vehicles, pets again, humans, anything you like. When you're older, you're allowed to draw people in cafes as well, but you just sort of don't let them know that you're drawing them or else they might get offended. Or, or worse still, come and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> don't come and talk and, to me I'm drawing I'm busy yeah and, and in terms of being a writer you just, just tell stories when I was a little boy this is a bit naughty I probably shouldn't be telling you this but um, you don't have to say this it's fine it's not that naughty and when I was a little boy I used to get extremely excited when I met someone gullible and I could lie to them Excuse and me. I particularly adults and I remember when I was a little boy and I told one of my teachers was very gullible and I told her all kinds of things. I remember telling her um, that we, one weekend, she was like, what did you do for the weekend? And the truth was, I kind of sat and watched TV. And I told her that we went on, uh, we went on a safari in deep, deepest, darkest Africa. And we saw lions and tigers, no, not tigers, they're in India. And bears, oh my. Yeah. And um, I remember once my teacher brought in a, an example of Braille, which is the little bump writing um, for... For blind people. Yes. And I wanted to have a go on it first. So I told my teacher that I used to be blind. <laughs> and she was like, okay. But that's where my storytelling started. So I think if you, to be a good writer, you've got to love telling stories. And also you've got to be a good reader. A good writer comes from being a good reader. So read anything you can. Read lots of books. Um, you know, there are lots of fabulous, fabulous writers out there who aren't celebrities. Um, and if you read those, you will find really, really lovely stories to inspire. And also, you. don't be afraid, if you, there's, there's sort of a big gap in between um, reading picture books and then reading fiction. That's why we're, we're really pleased that this has got so many, these, this series have got so many illustrations in. A lot of younger fiction doesn't have um, that many illustrations. So don't be um, uh, uh, snobby about graphic novels and comics mm. either, because they are really coming to the fore over the last few I years. I love comic books. Uh, uh, Hilda and the Troll. Is it Hilda yes. and the Troll or Hilda the Troll? Hilda and the Troll. I love that series. So that's a good one to start off with, I think. Fabulous. Another top tip. Have you got one more question? Yes, I have. I um, any more. What is your favourite children's book, both your own and other people's writing and works? Oh. Um, from Beverly Bunton Drudge in Lower Upton Snodbury from Worcestershire. Oh, very nice. I've never heard of any of these places. You'd think we'd made them up. Um, my, I always say this, and so many people do, and I'm quite excited because I think it's being made into a big budget animated movie. It's the, um, I can't remember, the Faraway Tree series, The Enchanted Wood, etc. by Enid Blyton. I'm not a huge Enid Blyton fan at all. I haven't read anything else that she's done. Um, uh, but I did always used to love the the, um, the front covers of her books, uh, the old illustrations, which is part, partly drew me to the Faraway Tree series. Um, but another, oh, a book, uh, a book that I've just bought, what you, uh, something that I'm reading at the moment by one of my studio mates. He's incredibly funny. Oh, yeah, and if you're, if you're a fan of the Hotel series, then this is a good thing to uh, read as well. And they're based on old classics. So the first one was Great Expectations, and the second one by Jack Knoll is Comic Classics, Treasure Island. It's really accessible, really funny, and it is full. They're really great. Yeah. Again, full of illustrations, and you get to learn a classic without having to read the classic. You'll probably read the classic when you're older. Uh, and the next one is going to be The Hound of the Baskervilles. Ooh. So there's a top tip. And I love, and in terms of in terms of my own books, it's hard to choose because it's like picking your favourite child. Oh, I forgot. But about um, that. I do really, I'm very, very excited about the new book. This is a good one. But you've got to read the others first. 
So if you haven't read any, you've got a lot of work to do. But that's what lockdown's for, kids. Um, uh, can I just quickly say as well, uh, mm-hmm. a book that I'm very excited about that I've worked on because I haven't really mentioned my own, um, is uh, a new series called How to Grow. And the first one is How to Grow a Unicorn by Rachel Morris Rowe. And that's coming out in June. Indeed. By the time you see this here in March, you know, it's only it's out in a couple of months. And then uh, my favourite books from another author would probably have to be, I'm obsessed, and I was when I was a kid, uh, by the Robin Jarvis books. Now, um, he's you have to do a little bit of investigating, but he's done some new stuff recently. But the books I love, the reason you may not have heard of them is because they came out in the 80s. But they are the what? amazing. Um, they're called the Deptford Mice Trilogy. It's called the Deptford Mice Trilogy. Oh, you've mentioned that I've never read And those. it's three books, and they are absolutely amazing um, by Robin Jarvis. He also illustrates them as well, and he's just incredible. Um and mm. yes, they're very, very exciting books about mice that live in an abandoned, derelict house in Deptford in London. And in the basement, there's a grate that goes down to the sewers. And down in the sewers live all the rats. And they worship a god called Jupiter that happens to be a massive, deformed cat. And um, it's Ooh. about the wars between the mice and the rats. And it's just brilliant and scary and extremely exciting. So, yes, I can't Top tip. thank him enough. Excellent. Right. We well, really hope that you enjoy that, the drawing. If you can share your drawings as well, you can find us both on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I think I'm at Stephen Lenton. And I am at S Butler Books. And we would love to see your Doris the Crocodiles as well. So do share them once you've drawn them. And we really hope that you enjoy the rest of the Bourneville Festival um, events yeah, and online. keep safe, guys. We're going to have you know a bit, a bit more time stuck indoors. So read lots, draw lots, keep yourself occupied, wear your masks outside, and um, don't spit and or swear. Inside. Yeah, there we are. Okay, take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully, in Bye. person, in real life. Bye.